Hey, what's up guys, JQ with Tech Creation. So I'm just gonna get right into it. This is a long overdue video. So without further ado, here's my official setup tour. So the desk I'm using is the Begant Sit Stand Desk. Now this is from Ikea and you've definitely seen this before all over YouTube. It's roughly 63 inches wide, which is a pretty decent length. And what I love about this is its height adjustment. You can adjust between 22 and 48 inches and I usually leave it somewhere in between the majority of the time when I'm sitting. Now the legs are pretty sturdy and it has a load capacity of about 150 pounds which is certainly more than I would ever need. The built-in under netting cable management was a big selling point for me. It has a pretty tight stretch to it, it holds up a lot of junk, really gets rid of all that clutter. And if you pair this up with a surge protector you can achieve that clean one wire look. Moving on I have two Philips Hue light strips that's wrapped around both edges of the table with 3M tape allowing you to create some pretty cool gradients it adds a heck of a lot more character to your setup and I like to switch it up from time to time. So the machine I'm using is a 2015 MacBook Pro Retina which is the 2.5 gigahertz i5 model with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now I ran my entire channel from the jump with this thing and even some of the more crazier content I've produced was all done on this machine and it's held up pretty damn well. I just love the versatility of a MacBook and performance wise it handles 4K content with ease and there's really no reason for me to upgrade at the moment. I keep the MacBook resting on top of a book arc made by 12 South. It has a really classy aluminum build to it and it provides rubber support so you don't have to worry about your MacBook getting damaged. It doesn't slide or move around and it matches well with my other components. So the MacBook is connected to my monitor which is the LG 27UD88W which is a 27 inch 4K display that looks absolutely beautiful right out the box. It has deep blacks, it's colorful, sharp as hell imagery and I didn't adjust any of the settings. It has features like USB-C connectivity, the one wire for all solution, and it even acts as a USB hub. This was quietly released a few months ago and it's like the little brother to the popular LG 34 inch ultra wide curved monitor, which I thought was a bit overkill. Besides, I like to enjoy my 4K content full screen without any black bars and it's more than enough screen real estate that I need for editing and when I'm just doing my thing. Holding up the monitor is a generic third party arm that I picked up off Amazon. It's made out of some heavy duty steel, it's crazy solid, and it kind of gives the display this floating effect, which I really adore. It's VESAMount compatible, so it works with most displays, and it has wire management clips along the handle for the ultimate cleanliness. Now, as you've already noticed, yes, those are Dragon Balls under my display. I received these for Christmas, and I have the other three put away somewhere. I grew up on DBZ, I'm a huge fan, and it really adds some pizzazz to my setup. Now, above the desk, I have a few characters overlooking the setup, I have Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, Lord Beerus, and Whis, and I think they look pretty badass right where they're at. Now the wheels I'm sitting on is the H12 Ergonomic Mesh Chair from Best Office. It looks pretty stylish, it matches my setup nicely, and it provides extreme comfort at such a ridiculously affordable price. I only spend 50 bucks on this chair from Amazon, and it's a great affordable solution if you don't want to drop a few hundred bucks just for a chair. Now I understand the wave around mechanical keyboards at the moment, but I'll take no wires and a slim profile any day. So this is the Logitech K750 keyboard. It's a solar powered wireless keyboard that connects via the unifying USB dongle and I've been a fan of this keyboard for years. So it basically means you literally never have to charge it up. It stores natural and artificial light and even if you're in a black hole it can operate in complete darkness with the stored energy for around 6 months straight. Love, love, love this keyboard. Now right next to it, continuing on the Logitech bandwagon, sits the MX Master Mouse. Now again, there's no wires here and I admit, I fell victim to the hype a while back and I just held on to the mouse ever since. It's pretty comfortable mouse, it's not out of this world like some guys make it seem. The big deal here is you can pair up three devices at once and switch between them with ease. But other than that, I mean, it does the job, it's easy to use and it has a pretty sick design as well. Now originally I was going to get a Behringer preamp, but after all the written reviews I ended up settling with the Focusrite Solo. So they're top players in the audio industry and for a while I used my H5n but I think it was time for a minor upgrade. I love its low profile stylish brushed aluminum look. The preamps are pretty damn solid and combined with my Rode NTG3 shotgun mic it produces some pretty good results. The audio you're hearing now is actually from that combo completely unedited so go ahead and let me know how you guys think this sounds. Now continuing onto audio the speakers that I rock for monitoring are the Audio Engine HD6. 
Now I think this cherry color looks delicious, but they're also offered in black. Now they're pretty heavy, but they sound great. Vocals are clear. It produces some pleasant low end sounds. It has Bluetooth connectivity, RCA and auxiliary inputs. And my favorite thing about these speakers are the magnetic covers up front. Hashtag classy. So for editing, I'm still using the Sennheiser HD 280 Pros. I've had no problems with these headphones so far. I really love the build. The audio is clean and they put out great sound for monitoring and even for casual use as well. So I have these resting on top of an aluminum headphone stand made by Satachi. It adds so much style to such a simple idea and it even doubles as a USB 3.0 hub and an audio interface with an auxiliary output. Connected to that, I still use my Lacey D2 4TB hard drive to store all my videos. It has quick read and write speeds, it works great. I mean, it gets the job done, there's not much to say here. And right behind my table is a wall where I keep a bunch of accessories on the shelves sitting nicely. It really helps tremendously with the clutter buildup. I personally picked these up at Target, but you can literally find these types of shelves all over the web. So yeah, I mean, that's the setup. Everything in this video from head to toe will be linked down below in the description in case any of you guys happen to be interested. And even some of the stuff that I didn't mention. If you dig this setup, go ahead and show some love to that like button. Drop a comment down below, show your friends, and be sure to subscribe for some awesome tech videos every week. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.